The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to today's webinar with your host, James McDonald. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. And I'd like to start by welcoming our brand new coaching par participants to our very first coaching webinar. And I want to begin by saying what a great pleasure it was to see all of you at this conference. Uh, we got great remarks uh, about the event, and now we're really going to get down and, and into the system. We conducted a webinar in regards to how to get started or where to find all of the resources in the coaching program. And I hope you had a chance to participate on that. And we really focused on where you find all of the various resources that are available to you. On the coaching members only website, uh, for those of you that have gone and done some exploring there, you can see all of the resources, all of the ad examples, the scripts, the different presentations, all of the instructions that are there. It is very, very thorough and there is a lot of information, a lot of resources that you can gather from there. If for any reason you missed that, it's really important that you go on to the coaching members only website and you listen and watch that webinar all over again. Now here's the difference between that webinar and today's webinar with Craig. Where is that webinar? We focused on you know, an orientation, where you can find everything, how this program is going to work, how we're going to get you to be ultra successful with this system. Today is really about getting started. Today is about strategy. As a matter of fact, you can see here, the title is your primary aim and your strategic aim. This is what we're going to talk about today, are very, very specific strategies, first, second, third, and so on. This is really what you're paying for. This is what your investment is all about. It begins right now today, and I know Craig is very eager to get started with you. He's put in a ton of preparation to really make sure that you're going to understand absolutely clearly exactly how it is that you're going to get started with all this. So I'm very, very excited for all of you. I know Craig is as well. So without further delay, I'd like to turn the webinar over to our coach, Mr. Craig Proctor. Craig, welcome, and please begin. Hey, thanks a lot, James. Um, well, here we are. Uh, welcome everyone to my 12-month coaching program and I'm so happy to have each and every one of you with us today is the first day of your new life you heard me say that at the super conference today is the first day of your new life and it really is it's a major transformation that you're about to make in your business and in your life so please circle today on your calendar it's like the old song in the 60s says today is the first day of the rest of my life and today is going to be the first day in this new business that you're planning to, to serve your life and make things uh, better in your life. I promised that if you actually commit yourself to this program, if you meet us at the 50-yard line and uh, participate on all of the calls and all of the webinars, uh, you will be successful in this program. Uh, take the advice of, of your one-on-one -on -one coach. Uh, do what I instruct you to do. Do what James McDonald instructs you to do, and you will be successful with this program. Now, if any of you have any questions at all, if there's anything that you need, you can either contact your one-on-one -on -one coach or you can contact my office toll-free at 1-800-538-1034. Remember, we're here to help you, and we're here to make you happy. And the best way to make you happy with this program is to show you how to start making money right away. So we're gonna to get to that on our webinar today. In the back half of this webinar, uh, James McDonald and I are gonna give you a very specific prescription as to exactly what you should be doing to start making money right away. We're gonna to explain to you exactly what to do first, second, third, and so on. But before we get to that, the purpose of the first half of the webinar is to start off by talking about you. Okay, at the super conference, we discussed your, your primary aim. Okay, we talked about your uh, primary aim and um, you know, what it is that you really want your, uh, your business and your life to look like. So that's what we're gonna start off the webinar discussing, is what is it that you really want your life to look like? 
In other words, why have a business if the business doesn't make your life better? Okay, it'd be kind of a, a kooky thing to do to go out there and start a business if the business makes your life worse. But in fact, that's what many, many of you have done. Many of you, uh, your business has made your life worse. Or begin by talking about what it is that you'd like, like your life to look like. What do you really want in your life? And then we're going to go about helping you design this, this real estate business that's going to give you more life. All right, so obviously, we're going to help you create this business that's going to make your life better. We're going to start off by first de determining what does that mean to you? What does a better life look like to you? So you're going to have to paint that picture in your mind. Get a real good understanding in your mind as to what you'd like your life to look like. And then we're going to help you get to where that is. We can help you build that kind of business. And that's exactly how you're going to get more life, is having a business that serves your life. Later in the webinar, James and I, as, as I said, we're going to talk to you specifically about how to make now money. And we're going to point out a few resources on the coaching website at www.craigproctorcoaching.com. And by the way, I'd recommend that everyone should set craigproctor.com as their homepage because this is the page that you're going to be referencing throughout the next year. At least you should bookmark it because we're going to be going here over and over again throughout the year. Everything that you're going to need will be at www.craigproctorcoaching.com. Okay, let's begin by talking about what success means to you. I'm going to take you now to the coaching website, and I'm going to take you to our call material for today. And you click on your primary aim and your strategic aim. So let's have a look at success. Under assignments, it says first assignment. What is success? After today's webinar, I'd like you to take this little survey on success. And we're asking you to look at three areas. And I want you to rank yourself between one and 10 and be real honest here. Look at the money that you're currently making now. And I want you to rank where you are right now between one and 10. A 10 would obviously be you're making the money that you really need to live the life that you want to live. So I want you to rank yourself between one and 10. Okay, next I want you to rank your time to enjoy your life. Do you really have the time to live the life that you really want? Please rank where you are right now between one and 10, 10 being everything you want. And one obviously, one obviously is unacceptable. And then finally, you're going to do this later today. Finally, how much do you enjoy what you do? I want you to rank that between one and 10. So after our webinar today, just take a few minutes and give that some thought. Now below this, it says your average day. So let's have a look at your average day. You're going to find this pretty revealing because what I want you to do is honestly fill out what your average day looks like. How much time do you spend sleeping? Let's say it's eight hours. Okay, how much time do you spend on your morning ritual? Okay, your morning ritual is, I don't know, getting up, having a shower, breakfast, getting ready for work. Maybe it's an hour. Next, how much time do you spend commuting, going to and from work? Maybe another hour. And then how much time do you spend working or thinking about work? That's the biggie. So what do I mean by thinking about work? You know, um, when you're not at work, how much time are you actually spending thinking about work? You're at your kid's soccer game. You know, you're there physically, but mentally you're thinking about work. So what would that be? Eight, nine, ten hours. And then on meal times. Okay, how much time do you spend on breakfast, lunch, and dinner? And what's the total? <clears throat> now, if you add that up, you can see here we've got 18 hours. If you add that up, you'll see that there's not a whole lot of time left over for you. And that's the problem. Okay, you realize that you don't have any time in your life, and it's a real grind. So one of the big things that we're going to talk about today and throughout the coaching program is how do we free up some time to actually implement the ideas that you learned at this conference? 
let's be real honest. You're going to need to free up some time to be the entrepreneur to actually get these ideas implemented. Next, I want to look at the definition of success. How would you define a successful and enjoyable career in real estate? What would that look like to you? I define it this way. You have a steady stream of clients who automatically seek out your valuable services without you having to do any cold call prospecting. Imagine being viewed by your clients with respect. Your clients actually value your advice. They actually listen to you. You're able to easily provide your clients with superior service and get them better results, which makes them so happy that they're willing to refer other people to you and they come back to you over and over again with repeat business. Now, imagine being able to pull all this off while working less than 40 hours a week. So you no longer have to be a stranger to your family. You're not working every evening, not working every weekend. And you make a rewarding income. How would that sound? Well, that's what this is all about. That's what I'm good at doing in the business of doing is helping real estate agents just like you in this coaching program create a business that looks like that. Okay, that's my job, and I've got a very good track record for helping real estate agents become millionaires. I'm going to take what I successfully did for over 20 years, and I'm going to show you how to do the same, how to duplicate it. We're going to show you how to duplicate these systems over and over and over again to get to whatever level that you want to obtain. And mind you, not everyone in our coaching program wants to make a million dollars a year. But that's what we're going to talk about in a few minutes, is what is it that you really want? And once we understand what it is that you want your life to look like, and once you have completed our business profile, and by the way, I hope you've all done that by now, completed the coaching business profile, because once you have, we're going to understand our company our coaching company is going to understand exactly where you are right now. We're going to know a lot about you. And that's very, very important. The business profile that you've completed or you're about to complete is going to enable us to have a very good, honest look at your present situation. And we want to know what you want your life to look like. Then we can go to work on taking your business from where it is right now to where it needs to be. Where is it that you are right now? And where is it that you really, really want to go? Well, we're going to help you create that roadmap. You see, the problem in the real estate industry is that the hours worked equals compensation equation is really, really messed up. It's an either or situation. Most real estate agents either make lots of money, but they have absolutely no life outside of their job, or they have a pretty good lifestyle, but they're not making any money. And then the worst place to be, of course, is that there's many agents out there like myself earlier in my career who are working 50 to 60 hours a week and they're still not making any money. Now, I don't know which group you fall into, but I can tell you this. I've been in all three of those categories. I've made lots of money, but I've been miserable because I had no time to enjoy my life. And of course, very early in my career, I worked like a dog and I made next to nothing. We're going to show you the mistakes that I made so you can avoid them. You're going to know exactly what you should be focusing on to get your business to do what it's supposed to do, which is make your life better. <clears throat> now, we don't have to look any further than the National Association of Realtor Statistics to know that obviously the traditional way of doing things is ineffective. Do you realize that 80% of realtors do not make it to their fifth anniversary? Think about that. That's huge. 80% of real estate agents do not make it to their fifth anniversary. Just as daunting is the fact that more and more real estate veterans, these are people that have been in real estate for 10, 15 years or longer, are packing it in. They're packing it in because they're finding that they just what they used to do just doesn't work anymore. They're working way too hard to justify what's left in their pocket at the end of the day. So let's realize Things are changing dramatically, not just in the real estate business, but in the world. Now is not the time to go it alone. 
And that's why I want to congratulate you on making such an excellent decision to be part of this coaching program. Now, we've got some headwinds. Consumers are a lot more sophisticated and demanding than they've ever been. Real estate commissions are under pressure. Technology is completely changing the way that we go about our business. So who's going to survive in the long term? Certainly not the ordinary agent who's trying to slug it out all by themselves without any leverage. You're going to be amazed at how much more you'll get done and how much easier the business will become. Many real estate agents come into this business and their strategy is just heads down, work hard. And you know what? Maybe that works for a short period of time, but sooner or later, they burn out. They can do the sprint, but they can't do the marathon. And they run out of gas, unfortunately, before they see any success. So let's take a step back to what we discussed at the super conference. Why did you get into this business in the first place? If you're like me, you imagined that the real estate business is going to give you lots of freedom, that you're going to be able to make a lot of money. You're going to have this great lifestyle and do what you really like to do. But let's be really honest. What really happened? And maybe this doesn't apply to everybody. I don't want to lump everyone into the same group. But if you're like most agents, what happened is you became a slave to your business. Your business didn't free you. I mean, for the few, for the few realtors that find financial success, it usually means they trade their life for their income. Their real estate business ends up shutting out all the light in their life. So your real estate business becomes your life. It doesn't free you. You're a slave to it. And you know you can do better, right? You know there's bigger issues and ideas out there that if you could just get to them, if you could just get these ideas implemented, it would really, really improve your life. But the problem is, is you don't get to them. You don't have time to get to them. You know what I'm talking about? Before your eyes, another day passes, another month passes, another year passes, and then you find yourself in exactly the same spot, working way too hard, but still for not enough money. And I know you're not satisfied with the money that you're making and the hours that you're working, or you wouldn't be in this coaching program in the first place. You realize at the end of the day, there's just not enough time left over for you and your family. The problem is, is your real estate career that was supposed to make life better is consuming you. It's consuming your life. And this thing that was supposed to provide you freedom is doing the very opposite. But there's another way. And that is what this coaching program is all about. This is very different. It's a very different way. It's a better way to run your real estate business so that your business is going to grow and thrive and feed you rather than bleed you. At the super conference, we discussed that you have to change your paradigm to survive. You have to change the way you think. If you change the way you think, everything else will follow. You change the way you think, and you'll start to change what you do. And when you change what you do, you'll change the results that you get. I talked to you at the super conference about getting 10 times more results with half the effort. And that's really the goal of the coaching program. You met people wearing the coaching name tags at the conference that are doing exactly that. These people had very, very dramatic shifts. Remember, I call this the quantum leap system. This is not the incremental gain system. This is the quantum leap system. This isn't about showing you how to do a little bit better. This is about helping you make a massive change. And the coaching program is going to take you through these steps and show you how to structure your business so you can leverage not only all of your resources, but all of my resources. Let me repeat that so everybody gets it. We're not only going to show you how to leverage all your resources, but we're going to get you to leverage off of all my resources. Do you know that, do you realize that everything that you want to do in your real estate business has already been done by me and the thousands of other real estate agents that are in my program? 
These people are already successfully doing what you want to do. But this is a process, and we're at the start of this process. And I'm going to challenge you to open your mind to new ways of conducting business. That's why you came to the conference. That's why you've joined the coaching program, because you want to improve your business, and you're not going to be able to improve your business if you have a closed mind. It's going to require a paradigm shift. Now, you may feel from time to time throughout this coaching program, you may feel that old paradigm pulling you back because that old paradigm doesn't want to change. And that's the natural thing that happens is we have this tendency to get stuck in our old ways. So when you hear new ideas, when you hear things that are different, my advice to you is don't freak out. That's what's supposed to happen. You're going to hear new ideas, and instead of immediately judging those ideas or shutting those ideas off, you want to shut the old paradigm off, not the new ideas. Instead of focusing on why these ideas won't work or all the obstacles, instead, I want you to focus on how you can implement these programs and how you can make these ideas work for you. Now, at the super conference, I talked to you about Michael Gerber and his important book, The E-Myth. And in The E-Myth, Michael Gerber talks about your primary aim. I'd like you all to read that book. You don't have to read it today. You don't have to read it all this week. But I'd like you to at least get into the book and start reading it. It may be that once you start reading the book, you won't be able to put it down. I promise you that when you start to read the book, you're going to feel like Michael Gerber is talking directly to you. It's like a conversation that you're having with Michael Gerber. And you're probably going to think the same thing that I thought, which is, wow, how does this guy know so much about me and my business? In the book, Gerber says that you're, you're going to be surprised to find out that your business is not the first order of business on your agenda, that you are, that your business is not your life, although it plays an important role in your life. But before you can determine what, that, what role your business is going to play in your life, you've got to understand what you want your life to look like and what you want your life to be like. So I'd like to ask some very important questions. I'd like you to grab your pen now, and I want you to write these questions down. What kind of lifestyle do you want? Okay, what kind of lifestyle do you want? What do I value most? Okay, what do I value most? What do I want my life to look like? And what do I want my life to feel like? Just take a minute and write those down. Now, these may seem like pretty obvious questions, but how many of us have never actually taken the time to really give this a lot of thought? You know, Gerber says in his book that most people don't even take time to plan a vacation, let alone their life. No wonder there's so many people that are wandering around unhappy. We never really think about what we'd like our life to look like. We never take the appropriate actions to make it happen. So your primary aim is really the answer to these questions. Do you remember at the super conference? I used an analogy. I think it was a pretty good one, so I'm going to repeat it here. At the super conference, I said, think of your life as a puzzle that's made, of sev made up of several pieces. And then imagine the picture on the lid of the box. Okay, the picture on the lid of the box that holds the puzzle. This is the picture of what you want your life to look like. So imagine that the picture on the lid of the box is the picture of what you'd like your life to look like. And let's visualize that for a second. Now, your business is one of the pieces of the puzzle. And obviously, you need this one piece called your business to complete the entire puzzle. Okay, you couldn't complete the puzzle without the, the piece called your business. But on its own, this one piece called your business really amounts to nothing. So without a picture 
of what the puzzle is going to look like when it's finished. How on earth could we possibly put the puzzle together? It'd be very difficult. And that's why having this picture called your primary aim, this vision of the completed puzzle is vitally important to the success of your business because without any clear picture of what you want your life to look like, how on earth could you begin to live it? Now, I've been coaching real estate agents for over 18 years, and here's what I found. The best of the best, they know where they are right now at the beginning of the coaching program, and they know exactly where it is they want to go. They know how they got to where they are right now, and they know exactly where it is that they want to go. They have a vision of how they want to live their lives. They have a vision of their lives which they practice emulating each and every day. And they spend their lives living that vision. Every day, they compare what they have done with what they intended to do. And if there's any disparity between the two, they don't wait very long to make up the difference. You see, what I found is great people seem to create their lives actively, but everybody else is just kind of, sitting around waiting for their lives to be created and just sitting around waiting to see where life takes them next. And I believe that's the difference between fully living and just existing. So when this webinar is over today, when you go back to work, what I'd like you to do is spend some time asking yourself these important questions. What do I want my life to look like? How do I want my life to feel on a day-to-day -day basis? What would I like to be able to truly say I know about my life? How would I like to be with other people in my life, my family, my friends, my business associates, my customers, my community? How would I like people to think about me? So let's look at the big picture. I want you to think about where you see yourself a year from now or two years from now. Or 10 years from now, what specifically would you like to learn during your life, spiritually, psychologically, financially, technically, intellectually, about relationships? How much money are you going to need to do the things that you really want to do? And when are you going to need that money by? These are some of the questions that you're going to ask when you start to create your primary aim. The answers are going to become the standard against which you begin your life's progress. So your primary aim is the vision that is necessary to bring your life, bring life to your business and your business to life. Now, I'd like everyone to have a look at some of the resources we have for you. Under assignments, you'll find that it says primary aim. Okay, and we're asking you to list 20 things that you want to accomplish in your life. Now, I'd like you to do this. And I know what many of you might be thinking right now. You might be thinking, uh, gee, Craig, you know, just give us the ads. Let's just get to the ads. Show me what to do. But trust me on this. This is the ball game. We're going to spend all kinds of time, including the back half of this webinar, talking about the ads and what you need to do. But if you spend some time right now at the onset thinking about what you really want, doesn't it make sense that we can better help you create a business to help you get there? So please complete this exercise later today. Not right now, but later today. I want you to give this some serious thought. What are the 20 things that you want to accomplish in your life? Okay, some people call this their bucket list. I want you to spend some time on this. This helped me so much many, many years ago. And it's something that I look back at over and over again. It's something that you're going to want to continue to look at and redefine because sometimes things change as you grow older. What I want you to do is step into what Walt Disney called the dreaming room. What do I mean by the dreaming room? What is the dreaming room? Well, I don't know. I guess if people knew what the dreaming room was, it wouldn't be called the dreaming room. But Walt Disney stepped into what he called the dreaming room. I want you to think about what is it you, you really, really want? I want you to step way out there. I mean, imagine if there were no boundaries. Don't worry about how you're going to get it. 
Don't worry about where the money is going to come from. Just write down 20 things that you'd really, really like to accomplish in your life. If there were no barriers at all, what is it that you'd really like to do? Maybe it's take that vacation to Europe that you've always wanted to, to take with your family. Maybe it's buy your dream home. Maybe it's put your kids through college. Maybe it's take up that hobby. Maybe it's buy that red convertible sports car that you've always wanted. Maybe it's getting back to the gym and getting in great shape. Maybe it's uh, giving back to your community. I don't know what it is that you want, but you do. Now, at first, some people find this difficult. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? But when I ask people to think about what they really want, to list 20 things that they really, really would like to do in their life, they actually have a difficult time doing this. Now, you ask people uh, what they don't want, and they can buy into that in a heartbeat, and most people do. But you ask them what they really want, and they have a hard time. So we're going to make you do this. Go through this process of uh, forget about how, how it's going to happen, where the money is going to come from. I, I'd like you just to, to fantasize. You know, that's why we've been given the gift of fantasy. This is why we've been able to fantasize. Everything starts with a fantasy. So let's go back to the assignments. Go back on the coaching website here under assignments. We'll look at the 12-month plan. Okay, let's look at the next 12 months. It says what, what my life will be like a year from now. And all you have to do is fill in the blanks. My, my team and I will sell X amount of homes per year. I will be doing over X percent of all real estate business in my marketplace. I'll personally earn X amount a year for my real estate business. I'll have no personal debt. I'll be in excellent health. Just giving you some ideas. But I want you to take some time and fill this out. Okay, what's your, your business, your life going to be like a year from now? Okay, now next it says two-year plan. So let's click on two-year plan. Okay, what is my business going to be like two years from now? Below that, it says five years from now, and then 10 years from now, then 15 years, and then 25 years. This week, I'd like you to spend some time on this. Now, I know, again, some of you might be thinking, well, this is a bit esoteric. It's a bit way out there. But do it. Humor me. Spend some time on this. What do you want your life to look like a year from now? Two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, I want you to start visualizing what you want your life to look like. That's the first step. Here's what's amazing. Most of us have a tendency to overestimate what we can accomplish in a day or a week, but we also have a tendency to underestimate what we can accomplish in a year. So spend some time on this today. I think you're going to find it a pretty helpful exercise. So now that we've spent some time, or you're going to spend some time, rather, thinking about your primary aim, what you want your life to look like, let's talk about how to build a business to help you get there. Okay, we call this your strategic aim. Commonly, you might refer to it as a business plan. Do you have a business plan? Do you know how you're actually going to reach the goals you've set for yourself? Or do you even set goals? If you set goals, do you accomplish them? Now that you've looked at the big picture of your life, it's time to design a picture of this business that's going to help you facilitate your primary aim. So here's the goal. We're here in the coaching program to help you make your real estate business do what it's supposed to do, which is to serve your life. Okay, we're going to talk also about this whole concept of working on your business versus in your business. Now, over the next year, we're going to be throwing a lot of new ideas at you. 
But what good would that do you if you don't have the time to implement these ideas? What good is that going to be? All that would do is cause you a lot of frustration. So it's important that we show you how to free up some time for implementation. Now, of course, some of you on the webinar here today, some of you in the program have lots of time because you're not selling any houses. But others, you're stretched. And you're going to need to free some time up so we can start to work on your business versus working in your business. So let's understand that for most of us, the vast majority of time that we spend day in and day out is working in our business, being the technician. We're involved in technical work. And what we must do is make room for the entrepreneur. We want you to make room for the entrepreneur so you can get all of these great ideas implemented. So as you map out your business, you're going to be asked some very important questions. Who are my customers? Who would you like your customers to be? What is it that your customers really want? What's your customers need? How is your business fulfilling those needs? How are your competitors addressing those needs? What could I be doing differently in my business to serve my customers better? How much money do I want my, from my business? How will I achieve this level of earning? And we're going to ask you to be very specific as you're going through your business plan. Now, for some of you, when you go through the business plan, you're going to see some questions that seem fairly obvious, but you're going to find other questions that are going to surprise you because they're really, really important questions that to date, you may not have given much thought to. And your answers to these questions are going to become the standard against what you're going to begin to measure, how you're going to measure the progress that you've made. So after today's webinar, I'd like you to go back to the coaching website and I'd like you to fill out the assignments that we've covered here to the best of your ability. And I'd also like you to read the E-Myth book by Michael Gerber, or at least begin reading that book. Now, what we're going to do for the remainder of the webinar is I'm going to bring James McDonald back on and James and I are going to give you some very specific advice on exactly what you need to do to start making money right now. And hey, we, we know that some of you are desperate to make now money. You need to make cash right away. We realize that. And that's the great thing about my system is it's very easy for you to do that. So we're going to go over to James now. And James and I are going to take you through the coaching website. We're going to show you exactly what you need to do to get the ball rolling, to start to feel really, really good about your decision to join this coaching program and to start making money right away. So James, back to you. Well, thanks very much, Craig. And um, yeah, you know, definitely what's most important if we need to make now money is making sure that we have that steady, predictable flow of highly qualified buyers and sellers. I mean, this is what we've been talking about from your very introduction to the system is the idea that if you have choice in your business, choice of who to work with, that everything gets better. So everything that Craig's discussing here about how to have a better life, really so much of it can be traced back to having choice in your business allows you to work with the very, very best. And really it all begins with lead generation. If we can't generate leads predictably, consistently, automatically, if we can't do it inexpensively, and we can't generate the kinds of leads that we want, then we're not going to have that choice. So that's where we're going to start. You want to make now money, it all begins with putting in place the foundation of this system, which is lead generation. Now, here's what a good lead generation system looks like. It doesn't rely on one single source. It relies on multiple sources, multiple streams fill your pipeline. Multiple pillars support your business. That's what makes it stable. So think of these lead generators. Think of online marketing as one of the pillars. Craigslist, for example, would be one of the online sources that would make up one pillar 
of your lead generation system. What about print advertising, classifieds, editorial style ads, display ads in the newspaper, USP branded ads? There are so many different types of print ads that would all go to make up a pillar of your lead generation. We have direct mail that's ultra effective. Um, what about signage? And the list goes on and on and on. So what I'm gonna suggest right off the bat, and I've been so very fortunate in that I've been involved with Craig's real estate team and, and coaching uh, students just like you for so many years now that I can see exactly what the blueprint for success is. And it's never relying on one of these sources. It's always a healthy combination of many different lead generation sources. Now let me suggest this though, having said all that, and it is very important that we preface the lead generation system by saying that we're never gonna rely on one thing, that it is a, a strategy that involves many pillars. Having said that, what makes most sense to begin with is the least expensive, most effective of all of these different options. So you gotta start somewhere, well where should you begin? Now. To a large extent, your business profile is gonna help in that regard. There are some of you that have more resources than others. There are some of you where maybe you even got involved in this program, um, Craig, as you were mentioning earlier, not because you don't make the money that you'd like to make, but because you simply don't have the time to enjoy it. In other words, you know, the way that you're going about you know, earning your money uh, is essentially trading all of your time in order to make that happen. Well. If I'm speaking to you, and that sounds like your situation, that may be very different from somebody else who, you know, isn't opposed to working hard, but their problem is they're not making the money that they need to make. That means that you may very well start at different points with your lead generation system. Ultimately, we're gonna get to the same place, which is multiple sources of lead generation. But let me suggest this. Craig, you, you preface this whole thing by saying, if you need to make now money, you wanna make immediate money, money is number one that's gonna have that impact, it's gonna really encourage you to keep going with this and, and, and really thrive with the system, then the suggestion is we begin with online lead generation. That doesn't mean only Craigslist. Uh, we can start with uh, Craigslist, certainly. We can start with any number of online classified sources. We can start with Google pay-per-click which I highly recommend you do. But here's what's even more important. What we need to do is we need to consult with the MLS and make sure that what we're targeting in our ads or who we're targeting, what we're offering, really fits with who it is that we should be attracting. So let me give you an example. If we look in the MLS, would we be able to determine that there are certain geographical areas in your marketplace where more homes sell than others? And I believe that you're all saying yes. Well, of course, there are certain neighborhoods, certain communities where more homes sell more frequently and more often than other neighborhoods and other communities in the marketplace. So if that's true, and we're gonna start with online lead generation, then we'd be best to run ads that offer homes in those high demand, high turnover areas. Now let's uh, also look at price range. We could look at MLS and we could determine, is there a common thread in price range? Are there certain price ranges where clearly there's more demand, there's more turnover, there are more sales than in other price ranges? And of course the answer likely is yes, absolutely. They do not all sell the same. So if that's true, then we wanna run ads that offer homes in the price ranges that are selling most frequently. That, those are the problems just, that are in demand. Just to interrupt for a second now, what, what you'll often find, of course, is the lower price ranges, the, the streets and neighborhoods yes. that have lower price ranges uh, turn over at, at a, a higher frequency, and who's buying these lower priced homes? First time buyers. If you remember at the Super Conference, uh, I said if you wanna make now money, first time buyers are a great target market, because imagine somebody that's renting an apartment, you go out and you show them three or four homes, every house that you show them is way better than where, that, that apartment that they currently rent. So they're easy to satisfy, and they're usually on a month-to-month -month, um, lease, so you can close these transactions in a month. Versus uh, targeting you know, uh, move-up buyers who already live in a nice house, they're gonna be a lot more fussier, 
harder to please, right? You've got to show them dozens of houses before they find one they like. And then when they do find one they like, they still have their present home to sell. So all you can make at best is an offer conditional on the sale of their home, which may, may mean you don't get paid for months and months or maybe never at all. Let's, um, I, I really want to make sure that this is, ver- is absolutely crystal clear to everybody. And sometimes uh, maybe you, you think like I do in that when you can compartmentalize this stuff a little bit, it makes it easier to understand. So, so far, here's what we've got. We're looking at geographical areas to, de- to determine the neighborhoods, the communities in your marketplace with the highest turnover. Then we're looking at price ranges. We're determining the price ranges. And then, as Craig is suggesting, if we really want to make now money, the third thing that we want to look at is the types of sales, the types of homes that are selling or the types of sales. And if we're looking for immediate, then certainly first-time buyers. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to take all those neighborhoods and all those communities with with high turnover where there are sales and we're going to take the price ranges and what we're going to do is we're going to divide them up. We're going to break them up into first time home buyer areas, first time home buyer price ranges. We're going to break them up into move up. We're going to break them up into upscale and that way we can run ads that call out to those specific audiences. In other words, all three of those areas might be high turnover, high demand, but you would all agree they're attracting a very different audience. One is going to be attracting first time home buyers. So we can run an ad that offers first time home buyers a list of properties in a high demand first time buyer area in a high demand first time buyer price range. That's very attractive to that first time home buyer. And we can actually call out to them in the ad and say, first time buyers, just as we could do with a move up buyer, you know? And same is true with an upscale property. We can define the very audience that we're trying to attract. And as Craig said, heck, if you want to make the most immediate money you can make um, and you want to do it inexpensively, online marketing. We're going to attract buyers, but specifically, we're going to target first-time buyers by calling out to them and offer the, offering them exactly what it is they're looking for. It's absolutely foolproof to do it that way. Now, I also want to say this. Where is it appropriate to run these ads? Where can we run these ads? Yes, we're talking about doing them online. You could, you could set up um, a Google pay-per-click ads through ConsulNet the website company highly recommend you do that start with a say a five dollar a day budget anybody searching for homes in your area is going to find these high demand properties because you're going to run ads that perfectly reflect what those prospects are searching for on google it's a very simple strategy it's very inexpensive but craig the truth is this anywhere where prospects are looking for properties for sale we can run these ads which means print as well so Craig, your local newspaper um, in Newmarket, not expensive. It's not like the New York Times, just a, 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 you know, a, a small real estate pullout section with classified ads. Other real estate agents offer their properties for sale there. These ads are every bit, if not more targeted and more effective in those inexpensive print locations as they are online. So we don't want to suggest that there's one option that we have, what we're suggesting is that if we can, first of all, craft the message, that message is very versatile. The message can be run many, many different places, both in print, online, um, different websites online, through Google, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Craig, the next thing that we really should talk about as it pertains to lead generation is making sure that the website is set up effectively. Is that something you want to get into right now? Um, yeah, by now everybody uh, should have their success website, uh, at least ordered it if it's not already um, up and running. Uh, you need at least to have the less branded website. Preferably uh, you've got both websites. You've got the branded uh, and the less branded website, and you should be registering benefit rich domain names. Okay, a benefit rich domain name pretty much tells the prospect what they're going to find when they get there. So if uh, my domain name is www.bostonhomeevaluation.com, just from the domain name, a prospect would know what they're going to find when they get there. Yeah, you know, another thing as well, when, when we're talking about these domain names, 
Uh, if you're running ads in print, it's best to procure a .com domain name. Why? Because prospects, you know, consumers, I should say, assume that you know the website is .com. So they're they're going to err on the side of .com if they err at all. But here's the difference. What we're going to be showing you is that when you set up these ads for online lead generation, okay. All you're asking your prospect to do is click on the domain name. So they're not typing the domain name into their, you know, into their keyboard. All they're doing is clicking. So you don't need to get a .com. Now, here's why this is important. What it means is that there's a lot more availability of domain names since you don't need to get the .com. And it's really important that in the ads that you run, the domain name accurately describe what it is you're offering in the ad. So this is what Craig is referring to. It's almost like this. You should be able to read the domain name and know exactly what is being offered in the ad and what you're going to find when you click on that domain name. That's how that should work. So, um, you know, if you run an ad that says uh, Glenway Estates Homes with Pools dot net. I wonder what would happen if you clicked on Glenway Estates Homes with Pools dot net. Well, it makes sense. You're going to find Glenway Estates Homes with Pools. It perfectly and accurately describes what you're looking for. Um, here's something else that is going to be more and more important to all of you as we go along, and it's that we also need domain names in each one of the ads to have the ability to track where the response is coming from. Craig, um, you know, this is something that is very easy to struggle with, is that, you know, we throw, uh, you know, we, we throw a lot of mud at the wall, and see what sticks. But the problem is, is that if we use the same domain name in all of the ads that we're running, then we're kind of left scratching our heads wondering what works and what doesn't work, and we really don't know. Yeah, so each approach needs to have its own unique domain name. And Adrian, maybe we can go to my less branded site right now and show everybody what they should have. If you go to yorkregionhomeinfo.com, We'll have a look at my site. And we're never, with the less branded uh, advertising uh, strategy, we're never going to drive traffic to the home page here, okay? We're never gonna go there. We're always gonna go to a page, a landing page within the less branded site. So if I'm offering, if I run an ad that says, um, says uh, Boston uh, free uh, online home evaluation, then we're gonna go under sellers, we're gonna go, yep, to that page right there. What is your home really worth? So only one thing should happen when the prospect enters a domain name in any of your ads, whether they're online or offline, they should go immediately to the corresponding landing page within the less branded site. You're gonna use your branded site uh, for uh, your USP advertising when you're promoting your unique selling propositions and when you're promoting your properties. But at a minimum, you all should have the less branded, the less branded website because that's the most effective and least expensive strategy that I know of to generate leads is with the less branded approach. Now, James, I think we should take everyone to the coaching site and we should uh, we should go Craig, uh, me, through the resources. Let me just interject for one second here because um, this is important. We're talking about contacting success website, and I wanted to wait until this point in the webinar to, to really talk about how important this is. When you contact Success website, if you haven't already, it's for two reasons, okay? The first is yes, you need to make sure that your website is set up properly, and having that resource of yorkregionhomeinfo.com is vitally important to everybody. If your non-branded information website does not look like yorkregionhomeinfo.com, you need to get on the phone with Success Website as many times as it takes until it does. They have different looks. They have different um, options as far as what information is required, etc. The closer you get your website to looking exactly like this one, the better. And, and, and really it boils down to this. This is the model we want you to start with. The, the great expression we like to use is you imitate before you innovate. So we want this model to be the base model. We can make changes, you can test, you can do different things from here because we can always go back to the base. But if you start with something other than this, our fear is 
it won't work in the first place. And that really, um, you know, uh, it's disappointing when that happens and it often makes it difficult to move forward. So this is the model. Write it down, yorkregionhomeinfo.com. Make sure you're looking at that. Now, here's the second reason. When you contact Success website, I mentioned earlier on how how important it is or um, how easy it is to generate leads using Google pay-per-click advertising. And I got to tell you, doesn't matter your position. You do the business profile. You're making all kinds of money. You're struggling. You're anywhere in between. For everybody that is part of the coaching program, there is no reason why you shouldn't be generating leads from this very easy source. Okay, here's how this works. As I said, you're going to set up a very inexpensive budget. Start with five bucks a day. That means the number of clicks you generate on your ad cannot exceed five dollars a day. If no one clicks on your ad, didn't cost anything. But the real benefit of this is that we can run ads on Google that offer the kinds of properties that prospects are searching for. So we can have prospects from all over your marketplace and even outside of your marketplace that are searching for properties in your marketplace. These prospects, they go on Google. Not everybody does this, of course, but many do. You only pay if the prospect not only finds your ad, but actually clicks on your ad and is taken to your website. So imagine you run a Google ad that offers um, an online home evaluation. Prospects trying to find the value of their property or what homes in their neighborhood are selling for. And they come across an ad that offers exactly that, takes them to this website. Here's why this strategy is so obvious and why it's one of the very first that all of you need to get uh, up and running is that it is the definition of leverage. Craig, earlier on in the webinar, talked about leverage, talked about 10 times the result with a fraction of the effort. There is no better example that I can think of than these Google ads. Here's why. Once you create these ads, once you determine what it is prospects are searching for when they're going on Google looking for real estate, and you craft ads that offer them what they're looking for, you drive them to the landing pages on your website, you determine your budget, you determine the key search words. Once all that is done initially, it has nothing to do with you. Nothing. You simply generate leads while doing anything and everything else. You don't look at it every day. You don't tweak it. You don't post anything. You don't do anything. You have something in place that works separately from you. It is independent completely of your effort. So over the course of a weekend, you come back into the office and you've generated a handful of highly qualified prospects that are looking for properties. And another agent that you meet in the office says, well, I generated a handful of prospects as well. The difference is the way they did it was they spent the weekend knocking on doors, making phone calls, spending hours sitting in open houses or any other old school technique. And you generated your handful of leads while doing anything else had nothing to do with you. That is by definition, that is leverage. So this is something that we can't encourage enough to let Success Website help you with this. It's not that you can't do this without Success Website. You could, but they do it every day. So, um, you know, they're experts. It would be easy to ask them to help you and make sure that it's all set up effectively. So, Craig, I know that you want to go on and take a look at the resources on the website now. Um, so why don't we go ahead and do that? Yeah, let's do that. We'll show everybody... Um what they should be doing first, second, and third, and uh, what to, you know, everyone should spend some time, by the way, on the coaching website, becoming familiar with all the wonderful resources that you have. Let's start with classified ads, um, Craig, because we've talked a, a lot here about online ads, and I think we focus a lot on online ads as well. And I know that, um, you know, you and I are, are very careful to make sure that in, in speaking so much about online ads because of all the obvious benefits, that what we're, we're not sending across a message that says you shouldn't focus on print advertising, particularly classified ads. Um, Craig, how, how many houses did you sell in your career that originated from online lead generation? Well, these are my favorite. My, 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 yeah. my absolute favorite way to generate leads, and still today, is running uh, print ads in the local paper. 
I would recommend that you find a newspaper, preferably that has free home delivery. Okay, yes. the problem with these uh, publications that are, you know, in the little yellow boxes at the corner, they're, they're, they just, you know, people don't pick them up, right? They don't work as well. What you want is you want to find a small uh, daily or weekly newspaper where they've got free home delivery to every house in your community. That way you're not paying to run your ad, uh, you know, in areas that you don't work. Uh, so, for example, I'm here in Toronto and I used a local publication called the, the New Market Era Banner. It went to every house in New Market in Aurora. Uh, I did not advertise in the Toronto Star. The Toronto Star is the great big newspaper that goes out to 3 million people. Why? Because I don't work in an area of 3 million people. I don't want to spend a lot of money targeting buyers and sellers that I don't intend to work with. Now, these little ads would cost me normally anywhere from $19 to about $30, $35 to run them. You may pay a bit more depending on how big your paper is, the circulation. These ads should run under homes for sale, okay, not under real estate services, okay? Uh, many times a newspaper will want to run your ads under real estate services because we're not advertising a specific property, right? We're advertising one of two things. We're advertising either a free list of homes, so a list of foreclosure homes or um, a list of uh, homes that have recently sold in a neighborhood, or we offer a free special report a free report on mistakes to avoid when you're buying and selling. So sometimes the newspaper will say, well, look, because you're not advertising a specific home, you have to run this ad under real estate services. Well, that's not going to cut it. Why? Because buyers and sellers aren't looking under real estate services. You know, buyers aren't looking for a real estate agent, right? We discussed that at the conference. Buyers are not looking for a real estate agent. They're looking for homes. So you've got to find a publication that's going to allow you to run your classified ads under homes for sale. Another great place to run these classified ads, as I mentioned at the conference, is uh, peppered randomly throughout the local paper under a remnant space deal. This is where you're going to negotiate for extra space that every newspaper, every publication has. They may tell you they don't have it, but they all have it. It's impossible not to. You can't build a paper too big you've, or too small. You've got to build it too big. They've got extra space that they use to... Um, for house ads to promote themselves or they give away this space to charities. Um, these are the ads that I was able to run for $19 a piece. Very, very inexpensive uh, because you're going to find that, you know, not every buyer and seller is looking in the classified section. You may find that running some of these ads in the business section or the sports section work well for you. How are you going to know? You're going to test. That's a great thing about our program is because you're driving all of your inquiries to the website or the hotlines, you're going to know, right away how well or not well each ad worked or you know you can test you should be testing everything one ad versus another ad one newspaper versus another newspaper one day of the week versus a different day of the week craigslist versus google pay-per-click you're going to test everything out over the next couple of weeks if you're smart you pay attention to the results and your marketplace will tell you which approaches work the best and then simply rinse and repeat Right. Well, that's why we call this automatic marketing, because once you test the different ads in your marketplace, uh, the marketplace will tell you which campaigns are going to work the best, which newspapers, which mediums are going to work the best, which days of the week are going to work the best, which headlines are going to work the best. And then you just keep doing more of the same. What will happen is it will give you great predictability. Wouldn't that be great to know that every week you had 40 or 50 leads coming in? That's vitally important. OK, that we. Um, we, we bring some certainty to your business because uh, most of you do not have that right now. Your, you know, your, your business is kind of up and down. You've got a, you know, a, a good month, a bad month. So we need to stabilize your business. That all starts with lead generation. Now, while lead generation is truly the foundation of my system, remember, my system is a complete system. So we don't just stop with lead generation. We show you what to do uh, when you follow up with the leads, what to do and say. OK, and we're, we're going to make sure that everybody understands how important it is to come on the role play call. OK, that's vitally important. So this is a complete system. We're going to show you how to generate leads and we're going to show you what to do with the leads, how to qualify these leads, how to understand how motivated these buyers and sellers are. What is their timing? And then we're going to show you after you've determined how to. Uh, determine the motivation and timing of these prospects, 
we're, we're gonna show you how to get face to face with the best buyers and sellers. Now remember, you can't make buyers and sellers meet with you. You can only compel them to wanna meet with you. So we're gonna start that conversation tomorrow. And then of course, when all that works, you're gonna start to book appointments with buyers and sellers, and we're gonna show you how to master the presentation. There's the universal callback script that we're gonna ask you to print out, and we'll, we'll do that here in a few minutes. We'll show you where that is. You should print that out wherever it is you make your phone calls, that, that should be there right in front of you. We're also gonna ask you to download the listing and buyer presentation because once all this works, once you start to generate leads, and once you start to use the universal callback script that we just showed you to follow up with these leads, when you become good at it, you're gonna book lots of appointments. Well, you've gotta have a really good presentation. So we're gonna show you how to uh, you know, customize this presentation, but you can start by downloading the buyer presentation and the listing presentation right from uh, the coaching website. I wanna look at those classified ads a bit uh, more, James. And I want to show everybody my favorite ads just so I can uh, point everybody in the right direction. Okay, see that one, home sellers? I like that one. Home sellers, find out what the home down the street sold for. Okay, free computerized uh, list with pictures of area home sales and current listings. Okay, and we give people two options. They can either go to my website, areahomesalesreport.com, or they can call the free recorded message. All these scripts, remember, are recorded. If you've or ordered the AMS hotline, you'll have the exact same scripts that my prospects listen to. So I like that one. If you want to uh, generate seller leads, that's a good one. Um, let's also go on to Fixer Uppers. I like that one, Fixer Uppers. Bargains, lowest prices, these homes need work. That's a, that's a great... Um, that's a great ad to, to run to target first time buyers and you know really anybody that wants a good deal. Affordable homes, that's another good one. Of course, distress sales. Everybody wants a good deal, even wealthy people, or 10 best buys. Uh, these are two of my favorites right at the bottom here. Must sell and find out what the home down, find out uh, what your home is worth online. Now, these two ads at the bottom, you'll see they look a little bit different. Uh, I, these are double wide. They're um, they're wider uh, than they are long. They're about two inches wide and one inch deep. I ran these ads every single day in the newspaper. Okay, these are the, the ads that I spent, you know, $19, $20 on every day under a remnant space deal. One of them, of course, the must sell attracted buyers and the other one targeted sellers. So I'd like you to experiment with these ads. Okay, these again are the very ads that I ran year after year after year after year. Now, I know some of you might sniff at, at print advertising. You might think uh, print advertising is old school. Look at, um, you need to test all the different mediums and let the results dictate what you're gonna continue doing. If you run these print ads, these classified ads in your local paper, and you do really, really well with them, then you're not gonna wanna stop. You're gonna continue doing that every single day or every single week. So don't let what you think get in the way of what you test. It really doesn't matter what I think or what you think. What matters is what the marketplace thinks. And Craig, let me offer a suggestion here as far as testing. One of the things that we talked about on the, uh, on the webinar, the introduction, was we talked about that Friday ad clinic call that we do every single Friday. And you're gonna find it's a very, very valuable resource because yes, it's all about testing, but sometimes the question is, well, what should I be testing? What is it that I can test? So we're gonna get you to send in all of the ads that you're running and we're going to suggest the tests that you may wanna run so that you can compare one approach against another approach. You can test making these ads a little more specific. In other words, let's take this must sell ad for example. You wanna run this must sell ad but you wanna target specifically to a certain neighborhood or area in your marketplace. Well, we can take this ad and we can do exactly that. We can make this, um, you know, uh, Glen, Haven, uh, Glen Haven Estates must sell properties. And now all of a sudden anyone that's looking in Glen Haven would see this and it would be very attractive to that particular prospect. So 
there are ways of customizing and targeting specific audiences using these ads. And every Friday, you're going to come on the ad clinic call. And by looking at other, uh, other members' ads and by listening to our suggestions, you're going to be able to come up with uh, different tests to run. And very quickly, you're going to arrive at the formula that you just run over and over and over again. And that's really where we want to get you is that, um, and we said this over and over again, Craig, generating the leads really is the easy part. But it's only the easy part once we've determined what lead generators you're going to put in place and continue to run time and time again. So in the beginning, you know, there's testing involved. But once we come to the formula, then that's when leverage kicks in. That's when we're able to hit the repeat button and simply do it over and over and over again. Craig, I also wanted to make sure that we talked about editorial style ads, even if just briefly, because... In these local newspapers, very often what you might find is that editorials will actually be more consistent and, and better bang for your buck sometimes than even the classified ads. Here's how these editorial ads work. What you're going to do is you're going to submit an article to the local newspaper. That's really how I want you to think of these editorial ads. Craig has written these articles. They're real estate related, and they work because they would only appeal to somebody who's looking to buy or sell. Even if they're long-term, if they're not considering buying or selling, it's unlikely that these articles would appeal to them. But if they are even remotely considering doing something, the headlines are designed to be very appealing. And, um, and, in, and when you read the copy, you'll find that the copy – is also very compelling. It offers a free special report on whatever it is that's being offered in the article and an easy way for prospects to pick up the phone and order the free special report through your hotline. If you are doing this correctly and you're choosing the small, local, inexpensive newspapers, then these, these editorial ads needn't be expensive. You run them in the front of the newspaper towards the front. Um, above the fold is preferable. And you don't have to spend a lot of money on these, but very consistently, it is common that our members generate a dozen, 20. We've heard of, uh, you know, incredible response. Uh, believe it or not, I've heard of responses of 100 requests. So, I mean, clearly that's not typical, but the fact is, is if they're done correctly, they work really, really well. Now, here's what's great about these editorials. You can see that Craig has written many of them. So they're customizable to an extent. You can customize them to really target your area. For example, we'll look at this first one. Which of these costly mistakes will you make when you sell your home? Well, we can customize that very first one to say, you know, which of these, uh, which of these costly home seller mistakes will you make when you sell your Temecula home? And now all of a sudden that's targeting Obviously, someone from Temecula reading that paper, it's going to really jump out if they're considering selling their home. They happen to live in Temecula. That might be something that would really appeal to them. Um, but the idea is this. There are many different articles here that Craig has written. So what you want to do is if you're going to run these once a week, let's say, you're going to rotate through them. And maybe you've created eight different editorial style ads. And you're going to rotate through those eight different editorial style ads in your local newspaper. And what you'll find is remarkably... When prospects all of a sudden are in a position where they're considering a move, they will see your article for the very first time, even though it's been there all along. So I'm not suggesting that everybody reads the local newspaper. Certainly they don't, but many do. And many of those who do you know, have homes that they will need to buy and sell. If people move on average every five to seven years, then you know every fifth person is – in the process of considering making a move so this year. So having said that, Craig, for many, many years, runs this article. Which of these costly home selling mistakes will you make when you sell your home? For years, I'm talking years and years, this article is being run over and over and again in the local newspaper, and it looks like an article. And the people that are reading the local newspapers, because it's not applicable to them, they don't even see it. But then one day, they realize they're in a position where they're going to be selling their home. And all of a sudden, this headline really catches their attention. And they're seeing it for the very first time. Now, it's not that it wasn't always there. Of course, it was. But it's that when it's not applicable, you know, you don't notice these things. 
there's think of you know just driving down the street all the messages that we see that we ignore that we're able to filter out and of course Craig talked about that at the at the super conference that's called our reticular activator and that's really what makes these work but I strongly encourage all of you if you're going to be resourcing a local newspaper these editorial ads are every bit as effective and in many cases more effective than those classified ads are in the back of the paper and in remnant space. So don't ignore these thinking that they won't work. These can be ultra effective. Um, so uh, keep in mind uh, that these editorials uh, can be run online, not just offline. Many of your newspapers, sure. like my newspaper, if you go to yorkregion.com, right. our newspaper is both online and offline. So you could run this editorial uh, offline in the newspaper or online uh, on the, the newspaper's website. Let's go back to the home page um, for a second here on the website. And uh, Craig, you, you briefly touched on how important this is, uh, the presentations. But just, you know, we're gonna be getting into these presentations, obviously with your one-on-one -on -one coach and throughout the, the coaching program, um, week in and week out. The idea is this, you need to build an inventory of buyer signed to contracts and seller signed to contracts. That's the objective here. You're building an inventory of motivated, qualified sellers who are selling and buyers who are buying. The way that's going to happen is to compel these buyers and sellers to want to hire you. That's what a listing presentation is all about, okay? And that's what your buyer presentation is all about. Although many of you have a listing presentation, just because you have a listing presentation doesn't mean it couldn't be better and more effective. And many of you may even say that when you get face-to-face, -face, it is typical that you would get the listing, you'd procure the listing. What Craig has come to identify though is this, what is more important than getting the listing is dictating the terms of the listing. And the only way that you're going to dictate the terms of the listing is the way Craig did it, and that is, by being positioned as the expert. That's what these presentations really do. If you really break it down to the core, being good at these presentations causes you to look like an expert in the, in the, in the eyes of your prospect. The advice of an expert is held in much higher regard than the advice of a salesperson. You want to procure the listing, of course, but you want to procure it at your price. You want to procure the listing at your commission. You want to be seen as the expert so that when you offer your advice on pricing, they're actually listening. These are things that we've talked about and we'll talk about a great deal more as we move forward um, through the program. But at some point, and the sooner the better, you need to really start familiarizing yourself with these, um, with, with these presentations and start using the presentations both with buyers and sellers and of course in the beginning it's it's uncomfortable change always is but it is for a reason and what you'll find is that it really does accomplish this and we have proof as a matter of fact we have proof in the thousands our most successful students will say that although in the beginning maybe they used bits and pieces of Craig's presentation now they are all using Craig's presentation thoroughly so it started off being, well, I'm going to include this in my presentation, and then I'll include this. And ultimately, what it evolves into is, you know what? I'm just going to copy it. I'm just going to do the system because it works. And um, Craig, boy, what have you done? 10,000 listing presentations uh, over the course of your career. Uh, I don't know if there's anything that you didn't test or try to arrive at this perfect formula. So what you're looking at with these presentations is the end result of 10,000 tests to come up with the very best of 10,000. That's what this is. So obviously it makes sense to simply copy that. But this is gonna become a huge, huge part of this system. If we're generating leads, and you're using the universal script effectively, and you're booking appointments, but then those appointments aren't resulting in signed contracts, or they're resulting perhaps in signed contracts, but not on terms that are uh, you know, favorable, you know, the, the whole thing kind of loses its point. So, as Craig says, this is a complete system. This is everything that you need in your business, and, and certainly you can see what a huge role these presentations play. So, I wanted to put some emphasis on that, Craig. And um, yeah, I guess, I guess what you're really saying is, is if right now 
you find that the the only way that you can win the listing is by um, highballing the asking price and cutting your fee, then that's self defeating because now you've got an overpriced listing, uh, and even if it does sell, you're not going to get paid what you deserve to get paid. So um, we're going to show you how to completely uh, reposition yourself. Your listing presentation, as I said at the super conference, has to be so good, has to be so strong that it accomplishes two things. Number one, the seller says, I want to choose you versus all the other agents. And number two, I'm willing to pay you more money because we know other people we, we're up against are certainly going to discount. So number one, they got to want to pick you. Number two, because they see you as the expert, they're willing to pay you more money and they're actually going to take your advice when it comes to pricing. If they're not taking your advice when it comes to pricing, it means they don't see you as the expert. Right. They're not willing to listen yeah. to you. Hey, I want to do uh, something else before we go to Q&A as well. I want to go through the postcard. So let's just quickly show everybody the postcards. Then I want to show them, uh, remind them how to print off the universal callback script. <coughs> So here's our postcards. Now, you can just knock these off. They, they, they'll look exactly like mine. We've got postcards, uh, a ton of them here. Uh, you can go to, to my printer, bxlprinters.com. Here they all are. Um, for sellers, I'll tell you that for sellers, I like, I like the uh, online home evaluation uh, campaign. Let's go right to the top. This one right here. Okay, uh, there's one for buyers, attention home buyers. Okay, we scroll down a bit, find out what your home is worth online. Okay, uh, I, like, I like this on the flip side. Find out what homes in your neighborhood are selling for. So that's targeting sellers. So the, uh, my, one of my favorite postcards was uh, offering the online home evaluation on one side, driving traffic to my website, you know, and all free online home evaluation. But on the flip side of the postcard, find out what homes in your neighborhood are selling for driving traffic to the hotline. But you'll find many different versions of, of these postcards here. So again, this is a layered approach. Think of what we've covered so far today. James has recommended you can run some ads at no cost at all on Craigslist, Google pay per click, uh, signage, you've got your sign writers, you've got inexpensive classified ads, you've got your editorial ads, you've got postcards. This is what you're going to be testing. And every Friday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. on the East Coast, we're going to be looking at your ads. We're going to pick ads. James and I are going to do this every Friday. We're going to pick some of the ads and we're going to critique them. And we're going to talk about what's good and why it's good. And we're going to talk about what's not so good and why it's not so good. So not only are you going to be learning yourself by the results that you get, by paying attention to the results that you get when you test, but you're going to leverage off of your, that learning by understanding what's working and what's not working for everybody else in the group. Remember, you're not alone in this program. Okay, everybody that's in the coaching program will be going through these changes all at the same time. So uh, you've got a great network to leverage off of. Look, we're going to take your questions, and there's many ways for you to to um, ask your questions. Uh, you, if you know, you can use your telephone, your phone, and we'll take audio questions. If you have a microphone on your computer, we can take uh, questions that way, or you can just type them into the chat box, and we'll take uh, questions in any of those uh, three ways. Okay, now have we been on the intro call? Did you go through what do I need and first steps? Yes, absolutely. Yes, all of it. Okay, now so if you've if you missed the intro call uh, with with James, you can go onto the coaching site and you can listen to that. Um, yeah, let's just show uh, everybody where that is. So again, if you've if you missed the intro call, there it is. You just hit download or listen. Really helpful uh, for you to listen to that. Now, as a final reminder, your business profile, many of you have already started with this process. Some of you have finished. Some of you haven't even started. It's very important that you do that because, uh, as I said earlier, we need to have a really good understanding of exactly where you are right now and where it is that you want to go so we can help you create the roadmap.
between where you are and where it is you want to go. Okay, let's do this. Uh, let's go to our wonderful operator, Andrea. And uh, Andrea is uh, going to repeat to everybody how you can get your questions answered, and we'll take as many as time will permit. Yes, sir, and thank you. We already have several members who have already pressed the hand icon if to ask their question. If you have a mic on your computer or you're on the telephone, we can take an audio question from you. We'll only go to you for a few moments. If we don't hear your response back, that means your mic is probably not hooked up correctly, and we'll just move on to the next caller. And you can type your question in the Q&A box, which some have already done. Our first audio question comes from Pam Reilly. Your line is open. Hello, can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Pam. Oh, um, I was just wondering if there was a place on the site where we can hear Craig giving his listing presentation and buyer broker presentation rather than just seeing the word since it sounded so wonderful at the conference. <laughs> yes, uh, we're going to get to uh, an entire coaching call where I'm going to uh, go through the, the buyer presentation and the listing presentation step by step by step by step. It'll be a webinar just like we've done here today. And then you're going to be able to watch that over and over and over again, burn a CD, listen to it in the car over and over again, which is uh, a very good idea. Okay. And uh, do you have an idea when that will be available on the uh, site? Coming up uh, over over the next couple of weeks, we're going to try to dole this out to you in um, – in steps that make sense. So first we want to concentrate on lead generation and then conversion, and then we're going to get into the presentations. Okay. I will try to have patience. I can't wait. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank uh, you. But you, you know, if you look through the resources, I'm sure you'll find uh, lots of uh, good stuff on the website uh, that'll, that'll tie you down Sounds between good. now and then. But uh, I promise you, you will be able to listen to me, give those presentations over and over and over again. Thank you so much, Craig. You're welcome. Our first types question comes from Lee Gallagher. What contact management does Craig suggest and why? Okay, well, I used Agent Office and uh, just because that's what I started with, so I, I really like it. Uh, I've never used anything else, uh, so I, I can't tell you that it's better than uh, the other big one out there is Top Producer. And then, of course, we had uh, Brandon Wise from Wise Agent present at the super conference and I'm hearing really good things about his contact management system and it's an online system and I think it's like 20 bucks a month per user or something it's really inexpensive so I would say this the best contact management system is the one that you're actually going to use what we hear from some members is their contact management system is um, you know it's it's too confusing it's too hard to use and um, you know that that shouldn't be the case you want one that's going to do everything you need it to do, but um, not be so complex that it makes it difficult. Our next question comes from Asamani Garza. What strategy do I use for an inventory that's really low and we're facing multiple full and above price offers? He's from the Miami market. Okay, sorry, repeat that again. Um, he'd like to know what strategy he should use since his inventory is really low and he's facing multiple full and above price offers. Well, my strategy would be get listings. So I would run, uh, I would use uh, the postcards, the editorial ads, and the classified ads uh, to uh, the, the, the best ads that target sellers. And uh, if you're in a market like that, you want to be the guy that has all the listings. Okay. Our next guest, Anita Green, asks, is there a tracking tool used to track each ad, especially when you're running so many? Yes. Uh, you're going to use uh, uh, you're going to use the control panel on the success website and the AMS hotline system. That's where you're, you're going to go to um, uh, measure the results of all the ads that you're running. Now, with the hotline, you're automatically given 1,000 mailboxes. So you're going to copy... Uh, the, all the scripts are in the 1000 series. So let's say I'm running the costly home seller campaign, the costly home seller mistakes. That script I know is copied into 1000. If I want to run that ad in five different newspapers, I would copy the script that's in 1000 into uh, ID box 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000, etc. Now I'm going to know which ad worked the best. Uh, you know, or I might, you know, I might be, um, testing the same ad in five different newspapers or um, in the same newspaper five different days of the week. With the, with the website, 
you're going to register a unique URL or a unique domain name for each approach. So if I want to run the same ad in five different places, I need to have five different domain names. So, uh, for example, when I'm running the online home evaluation, one of my domain names might be, you know, torontohomeevaluation.com. The other one might be torontohomepricing.com. So I'm going to know, um, you know, based on the domain name, I'm going to have that written down, okay? When it's torontohomeevaluation.com, that's in the Sunday paper. And when it's torontohomepricing.com, I know that that's a postcard. Now I can measure my postcard versus the ad in the newspaper. All right, so this will make more sense, uh, everyone, as we uh, do our Friday ad clinic calls. Remember, on Friday, we focus on just lead generation. That's all we focus on every single Friday for the next year. Lead generation, lead generation, lead generation. We look at all your ads. Every Thursday, it's follow-up, 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 follow-up. All right, let's see who's next. Yes, sir. Our next question from CC. I have a home office. Should I use a P.O. box or a street address as my office on print ad? Okay. Well, if, I, I don't really understand that, but if you're uh, if you're using print uh, if you're using print advertising, if you I, I assume you're talking about postcards, you don't need to have your address on it. Okay. Our next question from Bob Richards: Should I use a domain name masking? Or should I use domain name masking? James, I'm going to bring you into that. What do you want to do with that? Okay, repeat that again, Andrea. It says, should I use domain name masking? Okay, so that's referring to an online ad. In other words, you can just have it say click here, um, or you can actually show the domain name. You know what you're going to find? It's a test, but if you are using, as Craig instructs, if you're using domain names that accurately describe what's being offered in the ad, and if you use domain names that are beneficial, beneficial, uh, benefit-rich domain names, then often they actually improve the response and the quality of the response. So rather than it saying click here and, and underneath there's a link that takes them to, you know, whatever website or what the web page that you're sending them to, instead if you actually have a domain name that is descriptive and that is beneficial, it'll actually increase the quality and the quantity of response. So this is why it's so important that when you're procuring domain names, you know, you get good domain names because we're actually going to to use those to generate even more response. So hopefully that answers your question. Our next question from Felix, how and where do we check for availability for domain names? You go to namesforsuccess.com. Okay, so names, the digit for success.com. If you register your domain names there, then Success Website knows about it because they're affiliated with Success Website. If you're going to uh, register your domain names at GoDaddy or somewhere else, make sure that Success Website knows about those domains because if they don't, uh, those domains will not be tracked by the control panel. Okay. Our next participant, Dominic. Should we attempt to start utilizing what we've learned today or should we consult with our assigned coach first? Well, look, there's nothing wrong with uh, starting to test your ads. Um, I, I'm just a big believer in, look, um, start testing, pay attention to the results, and your coach, uh, myself and James, we're going to give you, we're going to give you guidance. We're hoping that you learn something on every one of the calls, every one of the webinars, uh, that you, you do. Um, I don't think any of us would, would hold you back from, from pushing forward. Look, here's what's going to happen. You're going to make some mistakes. That's what's going to happen. And our job is to dust you off and get you back up again. But um, I, I think uh, my advice to everybody here is take a look at all the resources we've given you on this site. Give careful consideration to who it is that you want to target. Do that research that James McDonald talked about. Go on to MLS. Okay, if you're if you're targeting sellers, you want to to attract the listings that are going to sell. So what price ranges, what streets, what neighborhoods have the highest turnover? Those are the listings that you want. Okay, who is buying those properties? Those are the buyers that you want to target. You start to run these ads. By doing 
even if you mess it up, you're going to have better questions to ask your coach. By doing nothing, you gain little experience, whether it's good or bad, and the quality of your questions aren't as good. So yeah, don't be afraid to go out there and, and do, even though it might not be perfect. I know some of you are perfectionists, but don't wait to try to know it all. You're not going to know it all. Just you know, go out there, start doing it, and this is a work in progress. Uh, we're, you know, we've got an entire year together where we're going to be working together, and you're going it's, it's, it, to we're going to be perfecting. Think of the way a rocket goes to the moon. Do you know that a rocket is off course 90% of the time? It's just correct, 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 correct. Well, that's what we're going to be doing here in the coaching program. Okay, uh, let's do this. I, I think we're running out of time. Uh, James, anything that you want to summarize here before we wrap this up? Well, I think you can see from all of these questions and, and from all of the content how detailed this is um, and how that means you need help. I mean, really, that's what that means is that there are lots of mistakes that can be made. So I just want to encourage participation. And it starts today. We had a great turnout today. Yes, we record the calls. Yes, we put them all up on the website. But participating on the calls uh, is definitely the secret formula. It's what puts you in the mindset that enables you to really absorb this information. Whereas I know what's going to happen if you download these calls and you just rely on that is that you're thinking of other things while you're doing it. You're in your car. You're between appointments. You're between phone calls. You're just not engaged. You're not absorbing the information. If you set aside time in your schedule to do all of these webinars and these calls, I assure you that it'll have a much bigger impact. And that is the secret formula for all of the most successful students of the system. And so I really encourage you to do that. And you're going to see how vitally important it is to get really good at that universal script. And um, slowly over time, the lead generation part of this will become automated. And um, you'll have it on autopilot. And once that happens, then we can really move on to growing your business, which is the real reason that you're doing this in the first place. And I'm excited for all of you for, for doing that. Just to repeat, um, what's going to happen every week? Um, every week on Monday is a helpline call. Every Monday, you have an opportunity to get all of your questions answered uh, about uh, anything that we've covered uh, during the, the previous week. So you can, um, uh, you know, you can make a list of all the questions you have. We're going to attack those every Monday morning. Every uh, Thursday, you've got the role play call. Every Friday, you've got the ad clinic call. So. You know, we're, we're going at this pretty hard. Uh, you're going to spend uh, 90 minutes on each one of those calls. There's going to be plenty of information that will be communicated to you, plenty of information. Um, uh, you know, you have lots of time to get your questions answered. And uh, we're going to take this one step at a time. So I want to thank everybody for, first of all, being part of this program. Uh, I want to thank uh, those of you that have hung in for the entirety of, of this webinar. So uh, we're going to wrap it up for today. I want to thank all of you for spending the last 90 minutes with us. Uh, take care and have a great day.